Hello everyone, welcome to the ITLS Academy. Today we are going to discuss the topic that is your determination of protein nitrogen. So I'm going to start today's lecture. Introduction. Okay, we all know that the protein content of a food can be de determined by a numerous of method. Okay, and from this we choose it what we choose is a Jaldar method and the nitrogen combustion method for a protein analysis. So today we are going to discuss about the Jaldar method and in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the Dumas method that is a nitrogen combustion method for the determination of the nitrogen. Both methods are officially for the purpose of nutritional labeling of food. These two methods, this is your Jalda method and this is your Domas method. Both methods are used for a uh, nutritional labeling of the food product and this Jalda method can be widely used over a hundred of year. The recent availability of the automated instrumentation for the Domas method in many cases is replacing use of the Jalda method. But now when there is the there is uh, numerous automated instrumentation are present for the Dumas method so this Dumas method are replaces the Jaldar method now uh, Jaldar first one is your Jaldar nitrogen method the objective of this is that we have to determine the protein content of a corn flour here the food sample are what here the food sample are a corn, corn flour by using a Jaldar method now the next one is your principle here principle are divided into this this process are divided into our three part one is your digestion distillation and titration okay so the jalda procedure means the nitrogen content of a sample okay so jalda procedure what this jalda uh, procedure measure basically the jalda pro procedure measure the nitrogen content which is present in a food sample the protein content then can be calculated assuming the ratio of protein to a nitrogen for the specific food being analyzed and this can be divided into three part digestion distillation and titration in digestion step what happens Happen the organic nitrogen are converted into a ammonium and this uh, can be converted in the presence of catalyst at a 370 degree Celsius temperature and in distillation step the digested sample is made alkaline with the, the addition of NOH and the nitrogen is distilled off as a NH3. So in the first step what happened the ammonium sorry the organic nitrogen converted into ammonia in the presence of the catalyst and here the temperature are approximately 370 degrees Celsius. Now the digested sample which are produced in a digestion it can be alkaline with the help of NOH in the next step which is called a distillation and the nitrogen present uh, in it will be off as a NH3. Then NH3 is trapped as a boric acid solution. The amount of ammonia nitrogen in this solution is quantified by the titration with the standard SCL. After that, the third step is what? Third, third step is the titration step in which the ammonia nitrogen are, uh, are titrated with the help of HCl. And we are also using the reagent blank through analysis and the volume of HCl titrated required for this blank is subtracted from each detail. So basically these are the principle of the Jelda method. Now chemical that we use for in for the for for this experiment are boric acid, bromocerol green, ethanol 95. Boric acid case number 10043-35-3, bromocerol case number uh, 76608 and ethanol 95% that is case number uh, 64, 17, 15. Okay, they, the hazard related to these chemical are what? They are highly flammable, corrosive, and mm, then we using hydrochloric acid in a concentrated form, methyl red, sodium hydroxide, sulfuric acid, Jaldar digestion tablet, potassium sulfate, cupric sulfate, titanium, and tris hydro hydroxy methyl ammonium methane, uh, and they will cause corrosive irritant. These are the hazard related to these chemicals now the reagent that we use the first one is your sulfuric acid in the concentrated form then the, the next was when the next one is your catalyst salt mixture which is also called a jaldar digestion tablet and it will contain uh, jaldar digestion tablet contain um, potassium sulfate cupric sulfate and titanium dioxide okay and we have one more thing here uh, for the note that uh, jaldar digestion tablet that contains some of different 
केमिकल ओके डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ जलदार डाइजेशन टैबलेट कंटेन डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ केमिकल सो हियर द बेसिक केमिकल आर वॉट पोटेशियम सल्फेट क्यूप्रिक सल्फेट एंड टाइटेनियम डाइऑक्साइड देन द सेकेंड केमिकल विल बी आर सोडियम हाइड्रो ऑक्साइड सो हियर वी आर यूजिंग फिफ्टी परसेंट वेट बाय वेट बाय वॉल्यूम सोडियम हाइड्रो ऑक्साइड इन डी एन आई डिस्टिल वॉटर एंड फॉर दिस पर्पज वॉट वी हैव टू डू वी हैव अ सोडियम हाइड्रो ऑक्साइड वी टेक टू थाउजेंड ग्राम ऑफ सोडियम हाइड्रो ऑक्साइड टैलेट्स एंड इट विल बी डिजोल्व इन टू अ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव लीटर ऑफ डी एन आई डिस्टिल वॉटर एंड आफ्टर कूलिंग वी एट फोर पॉइंट जीरो आफ्टर कूलिंग वी मेकअप अ वॉल्यूम फोर पॉइंट जीरो लीटर देन इट विल बिकम अ फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ वेट बाय वेट ऑफ वेट बाय वेट वेट बाय वॉल्यूम ऑफ एन यू एच एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो प्रिपेयर एन यू एच अकॉर्डिंग टू योर नीड now the next one is your boric acid uh, what we do we take a 4 liter of flask and which we take 160 g of boric acid and 2 liter of boiled uh, and still very hot uh, then we add a deionized water mix and then uh, add 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 an additional 1.5 liter of boiled hot the double distilled water. Then cool uh, at a room temperature under a tap water. Uh, during cooling, we have to must take care that the glass uh, does not break up due to the sudden cooling. Or after that, we have to leave it for a overnight. When using the rapid procedure, the flasks must be shaken occasionally to prevent the recrystallization of the boric acid then we have to add 40 ml of bromocerol uh, bromocerol a green solution is formed uh, and for this purpose what we have to do uh, for bromocerol green solution we required a bromocerol green 100 mg and it will be dissolved into a 100 ml of ethanol then after that we add 28 ml of methyl red solution and for the for this purpose uh, methyl red solution will be prepared uh, when we uh, take 100 mg of methyl red and dissolve into a 100 ml of ethanol then we dilute to 4 liter of water and mix carefully then transfer 25 liter of boric uh, solution to a receiver flask and distill our digest digest blank the content of the flask should then be neutral gray if not titrated with the 0.9 0.1 molar of nuh solution under this color is obtained after that we calculate the amount of nuh by using this formula which we use for the adjusting the boric acid solution okay so for this purpose 0.1 more 0.1 normal of nuh is equal to ml of titer multiplied by 4000 of ml and 25 ml 25 ml Uh, by this way we calculate the uh, how much amount of nuh is required for the titration purpose now the next one is uh, add the calculated amount of 0.1 normal of nuh solution to the boric acid solution mix well and after that we verify the adjustment result by distilling a new blank sample then place adjusted solution into a bottle equipped with a 50 ml of re repeater now after that we have to prepare a sterilized scl solution for this purpose we required a 3.3 ml of concentrated scl which we which will be diluted with a 4 liter of deionized double deionized water then impede the old, old scl solution from the titration Reiterate the reservoir and rinse three times with a small portion of the new SCL. Okay, so when we uh, remove the old old SCL solution from the titrator, we have to wash it with the three times. Ah, uh, three times. Then after that, we added a new uh, SCL solution and the amount will be very less. Fill the titrator with the new SCL solution to be sterilized using a volumetric pipette. Dispense three ml allocate of the. Uh, the tham solution prepared as described below into a 3 elliminal flask around 50 ml then we have to add a 3 to 5 drop of indicator and this will be prepared by three part of 0.41% of bromocenol green in ethanol to 1% of 0.2% methyl red in ethanol to each flask and swill then after that we titrate each solution with the scl solution to a light pink Uh, end point and when we get a end point we note down the value and we use this formula for uh, the sterilized scl solution then the normality is equal to uh, how how ml of tham is required multiplied by normality of the tham then average acid volume uh, which is equal to 20 ml multiplied by 0.01 normal then this is your average acidic volume then write the normality of the sterilized scl solution on the stock 
container now the next one is you we have to we have also required a tris hydroxy uh, methyl amino methane that is also called a tam solution of 0.01 normal for this purpose we required a 2 g of tam in a crucible then uh, we leave it for our drying at a 25 degree celsius overnight then after cooling in a desiccator we dissolve it into a 1 liter of volumetric flask and then dissolve 1.2114 g of oven dried tam in a distilled water then after that we dilute the volume then hazard and uh, precaution uh, hazard caution and waste disposal see we all know that the we are using the sulfuric acid so the sulfuric acid are very corrosive in nature uh, to avo avoid it breathing va their vapors and come in contact with the skin and cloth uh, sodium hydroxide uh, are also a corrosive in nature we have to wear a corrosion resistant gloves and a safety glasses at all time when we are performing a digestion in operating hood with an aspirating fume tap attached to the digested unit uh, the waste of combined sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide has been largely neutralized we have to check the ph to ensure that its ph will be at the range of 3 3 to 9 so it can be discarded down the drain with the water rinse however for disposing any chemical waste follow a good laboratory practices outlined by a environmental health and safety protocol at your instruction we have we also allow the sample to cool in a hood before removing the aspirating fume uh, we also uh, um, adhere to normal laboratory safety procedure we have to wear a glasses and uh, lab coat all the time then material that we required for this experiment are corn flour which is not dry five digested tube five aluminium flask that uh, that is uh, around 250 ml spatula and weighing paper instrument that we required are analytical balance automatic titrator and uh, jelda digestion and distillation system procedure the first step is your digestion now we have to turn on the digestion block and uh, heat it properly to reach the um, to reach their temperature now accurately weigh approximately Uh, 0.1 gram of corn flour and record the weight. And when we recording the weight, weight it should be exact. Then place the corn flour into a digested tube and again we repeat it for a two sample. And we are also add one catalyst tab tab tablet, approximately volume uh, like seven uh, ml of concentrated sulfuric acid to each tube with the corn flour. Prepare duplicate blank, uh, blank one catalyst tam tablet volume of sulfuric acid in a in the sample and weight of a paper if weight was added with the corn flour sample. Now we place all the thing to the rack of digestion tube on a digested block. Then cover the digested block with the exhaust system and turn on. Now the uh, next part next. Step is let the sample digest until the digestion is complete. The sample should be clear but neon green with no charred material remaining. Now take take the sample of the digestion block and allow to cool with the exhaust system still turn on. Carefully dilute digest with an appropriate volume of the deionized double deionized water. Then swill each tube. Now now the next step is your distillation step. In this step we have to follow appropriate. procedure to start up the distillation system now dispense appropriate volume of boric acid solution into a receiving flask place the receiving flask on distillation system make sure the tube coming from the distillation of the sample is submerged in the boric acid solution now put the sample tube in a place making sure uh, it is seated securely and process with the distillation until completed in this distillation process a set volume of ns solution will be delivered to the tube and a steam generator will be distill the sample for a set period of time upon completing distillation of one sample proceed with new sample tube and receiving flask after completing distillation of all sample follow the manufacturer instruction to shut down the distillation unit so this is how we perform the distillation now the next one is your sorry this is not a filtration step this is your titration because it is completed in a three step one is your digestion distillation and titration so uh, in uh, titration what we have to record the normality of the sterilized scl solution as determined by the teaching assistant if using a automated ph meter titration system follow the 
manufacturer uh, instruction to calibrate the instrument put a magnetic stir bar in a receiving flask and place it, place it into a stirrer put a magnum keep the solution stirring br uh, briskly while titrating but do not let the stir bar hit the electrode titrate each sample and blank to an end point of ph of 4.2 record the volume of SCL. Now the third step is if you are using a colometric column, end point, put a magnetic stir bar in the receiver flask, place it in on stir plate and keep the solution stirring briskly while the titrating. Titrate each sample and blank with the sterilized SCL solution to the first fan gray color and record the volume of the titrated use. Then this is the data calculation. Percentage of nitrogen is equal to normality of the SCL multiplied by the corrected acid volume divided by the sample in gram multiplied by the 14 gram, 14 gram of nitrogen divided by the mole of the nitrogen into 100. Calculate the percentage nitrogen and the percentage protein for each of your duplicate or triplicate corn flour sample then determine the average value. The flour sample you analyzed was not dried sample. This is very important. The sample which we are using it is not dried. Report percent protein result on a wet basis on a dry basis and assume a moisture content around 10% or use the actual moisture content if the previously determined on the corn flour. Use 6.25 of the for the nitrogen to protein conversion factor. Now the next one is your normality is in mole divided by 100 ml. Corrected acid uh, volume is equal to ml standard acid for a sample minus ml standard for a black. Percentage protein is equal to percentage of nitrogen multiplied by a protein factor. Protein weight by wet, wet basis divided by a percentage of solid weight multiplied by 100% is equal to a protein dry basis. Now this is a flow chart in which we have a we have to take a sample weight a volume of SCL titrate percentage of nitrogen percentage of protein in wet basis percentage of protein in dry basis here we take a mean and here we take a standard deviation this is for a blank we take a two blank sample and here a sample we take a three sample of a same food product now come to the next one this is all about the determination of the protein nitrogen protein by using a Jelda method uh, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. If you have any query, just let us know in a comment box. You can also uh, ask your query to the helpline number that are already mentioned in your account. Sorry, that are already mentioned in your slide. Follow the ITLS Academy on different platforms like Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. Follow the ITLS Academy on YouTube and get our app from our Google Play. Thank you so much. If you have any query, just let us know in a comment box.